Team GB are still in second place in the Rio 2016 medal table, thanks to more success at uh, the velodrome. So let's take you live to Ola Shenoui, who is in Rio for us. Ola. Yes, Natalie, it's almost easy for us mere mortals to see all these medals coming in, the gold, silver and bronze, and to forget about all the hard work, the sacrifice, the dedication that goes into each and every single one of them. And one man who knows that only too well joins me now, Mark Cavendish. Congratulations, Thank silver you. medal. We know how much you wanted the gold, but how are you feeling about it this morning? Oh, I'm happy. Yeah, at the end of the day, like I'm a winner, so I kind of want to win, but I did everything I could. Um, and uh, earlier rode incredible, you know, so actually I'm, I'm super happy with it. I put everything into it and this is the best I could get out of it. So I'm really happy to finally have an Olympic medal. So. Talk us through the points race last night. It was typically dramatic, I have to say, for a race involving you, Mark. You like to keep us all on the edge of our seats. Talk us through it. Um, well, yeah, actually I wanted to be in, obviously everyone wants to be in the, the top position before they go into it. I had a bad elimination race on the first day, which is usually my strongest event. So that kind of put me on a catch up a bit. But saying that, Pursuit, which is usually my weakest event, I was second in, so it swings and roundabouts, I guess. But uh, yeah, I knew it'd be hard behind Elliot because he's, he's a defensive rider, so he always rides good from that top spot. Um, so it was gonna be hard chasing it. And yeah, I learned after a while, I wasn't able to get laps. People didn't want to get laps with me. Um, so I had to go for the sprints and uh, Actually, I felt, I felt good, but there was no catching earlier. I'm happy to get silver out of it in the end and, uh, and yeah, come away. But phew, that Omnium, I said it before, like, it's a silly event. <laughs> like, what happened, like, we used to have four medals opportunities for individual, uh, four, four endurance males in, in the thing. Plus, there was the kilos for the sprint for Chris Hoy and that. And they, they cut down the amount of medals that, that we had in track cycle and they bundled all those events into one event for one medal. So we got to do everything that everyone else used to do, you know. Um, but uh, it's nice to, you know, I've worked on everything and, uh, and come away with a medal out of it. So. It's quite remarkable. Most wouldn't realise that that was just your third international omnium as well. It's not as if you've um, got great experience in this event and still to come away with a silver uh, medal. because people just want to, like, they want to put down that I shouldn't be near and that, you know. Yeah, like you said, I, my first international omnium was January. And that was just to qualify for the Olympics. But I'm very fortunate, you know, especially when Shane was there at British Psych and like, he knows me, knows how, like I've always stepped up at the minute. And I said to them, like, I'll get an Olympic medal, you know? Um, and like, I was lucky that the people around there, everyone, the, the yeah, the, the physiotherapists, the mechanics, the technicians who build the bikes, the people who do the skin suits, uh, the data analysts, the coaches, everybody who was there at British Cycling all kind of bought into it. I was kind of part-timer coming in and they all worked super well with us and, uh, and ultimately we've come out successful. Talk us through that crash then in the points race last night. You claimed responsibility for it afterwards. Um, you may not have been aware that some armchair critics, if you like, were wondering why um, a disqualification wasn't um, yeah, considered. That's armchair critics always, like, you got to remember that if I fought, then it, it, it creates this, this, I'm going to swear on, is this live? It is live, Mark, okay, so we'll not go any further Okay, than that. like, Apologies. it creates a storm, especially on social media, you know. Um, but at the end of the day, I think not just this kind of offence, it, it's sad that people think that I do something on purpose. You know, the end, it was my fault, the crash. Um, and I messaged with Sangoon this morning, I spoke with his coach last night, he's all right. Um, but I felt terrible, I really, really did. It was my fault, but it's not malicious, it's not on purpose, you know what I mean? Like, I, to even like insinuate that, it, it's not very fair. Um, you know, we're racing, like I said, it's a hard event, we're racing over six days and uh, yeah, I'm just sorry that I've caused him some pain there, really. So. A lot has been written this week about your relationship with Sir Bradley Wiggins, whether or not you did or not have a falling out. How are things between you? Has he been in touch? He's just sent me a message now. I haven't read it yet. I could read it live on air if you want. Like, <laughs> that would be good. It's all right now, but if it's something bad... <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll probably, not go there, just in case. It's all right. Like, yeah, he's just landed back in the UK now. No, it's been blown out of proportion. Like, well, you know I give the interview to you. It's not really, like... At the end of the day, there's probably a slow news day, you know, and uh, clickbait's going to do clickbait in it. And, uh, but it's all fine. Like, I'm, I'm so proud, and not just those four lads, but the whole British, like, not even the whole British track cycling team, the whole British team. Like, you go on the lift now, and we got these, these, we got these uh, like, apartment blocks in the village, yeah. and the lifts take ages to come. And you get in the lift, and it's full every time you go in. 
And now, even if you don't know the person, you're best off saying congratulations. <laughs> they probably won a medal. Like so, it's a, it's a really nice atmosphere there. And uh, I know Laura's going to smash the Omnium today. And uh, we got Katie and Becky doing so good in the sprint as well. So it's going to be an exciting final day for the track cycling. And I've been super proud to be part of that team. So. You look at your huge success over the years. You're the most successful sprinter in Tour de France history. Um, 30 stage wins for this year. Where does that silver medal rank for you? It's not the gold you wanted, but it's an Olympic medal also. Um, I think in terms of cycling, it's not, it's not really there with the stuff I've done and as a professional cyclist. Um, but as a British athlete, like this is the biggest stage I can represent my country at, which is the Olympic Games. I'm proud to be British. I'm proud to represent my country. And, you know, ultimately I gave my best and uh, and I'm happy I could get a medal, you know, to, to add to that tally there. So. Just finally, very quickly, what we see in Tokyo? Oh, I don't know. I'm, I'm racing on Sunday. <laughs> I go home, I've got to go back to the day job the weekend, so I'll just have to focus on that for now. Best of luck, Mark. Thank, Thank you. you very much indeed. There is no rest at this level, is there? Mark Cavendish flies home uh, to the UK and then back out to race all over again. A fantastic silver medal, though. He's done it. Uh, a great achievement indeed. It certainly is. Ola, thank you very much.